Christmas. Guess what? We are live in the shop because I got two packages today. One being a new airbrush. Yay! So I got one new and best airbrushes. I got two more coming. But, and I'm going to hook this up real quick to my uh, line to use on this brand new um, paint project that I'm about to reveal here in a minute. This brand new paint project comes courtesy of one Topher Westcott. Topher is a friend of mine that does uh, Jason Mouse as well. Um, he paints both the hockey mask and he does the under mask. And so what I wanted to do was I promised Topher that I would do a live paint up to see if I couldn't do a little bit different color coordination than he does on his uh, version. Um, this is, like I said, this is Topher's mask. He makes them. Um, I just wanted to see if I could do a different variation of a paint job on it. Um, so, this is the box that came in the mail. I'm going to grab the big Rambo knife here and we're going to cut this bad boy open. Let's see what we got. Woohoo! It's like Christmas around here. I'm excited. Boy, this knife is sharp. Shit. Slice it through anything like butter. I just barely have to touch something. It's like gone. Okay. Open this up. Take this out. Put this on the stand. Put the box up in the air. I'm going to use this box somewhere down the line. I know that much. Send somebody something. The box will get reused. Okay. And here's what we got. I'm going to take the bags out of the bottom. Woohoo! I'll use those two. I'll put the mask on the sand. Ooh, look at this. This is so nice. This is like really nice in person. Man, he does really good. Oh, the latex is so nice. He's got such good. It's. Ooh. This latex feels so soft inside. This is incredible. Now I've seen pictures of this thing online. And it's what he calls a dead white. Um, this is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful, well done piece. I mean, really good. Um, I know the backstory of where this comes from. And I have to say, this is by far one of the best latex representations of a piece that I have in my back room, which I'm going to show you real quick. This is what it looks like in resin. This is a dead white in resin from Scarewell. Now this is a, 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 a resin bus right here. And this is the one that has a machete through the head. When I got this piece, I had thought about myself doing something along the lines of that. Uh, but like I said, I was too scared because I didn't know all the rules and stuff about what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do, all that. So this one right here is called a dead white. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my bad. This is called a dead Ted. This is the resin bus from Scareware that you can get. And I bought this a few years ago. This is one of the favorite uh, pieces I have. This actually serves as a model for the vengeance insofar as how the latex or how the resin's done in the casting. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the dude that, that actually sculpted this showed me how to do the resin part. And um, so I do that. Now, that's what the resin piece looks like. Now, what Topher did 
which totally took the ingenuity of loving that piece so much, he made his own mask, but he did it in an undead style. So what he's got here is a dead, a dead white, which is modeled after Ted White, the actor from the movie, and it's basically Jason um, between four and six, I imagine. Um, but it's very much modeled after the ear. Um, everything is modeled just about perfectly. The head shape, the ear, and then he took his imagination and said, okay, I'm going to, you know, take the nose off, uh, you know, put the axe mark on the head. Of course, he got the machete in the side of the head. Um, and I'm not wanting to be incorrect in speaking on this, but I think he may have had a little bit of his Ghost Jason um, ingenuity too. So, this is, like I said, this is from Topher Westcott. And what I wanted to do was see if I could do a uh, paint variation on it. Uh, Topher does it in basically the, the, the standard um, part six gray, and of course Vengeance is going to be in gray. But see, I like to take things and, and, and kind of mix them up a little bit and put my own spin on it. So that's what I want to do with this and see if I can't give it a look that's like dead, but not like it's a fresh dead look, not really a undead, undead look. So... That's what I'm going to try to do with this. And kind of do a little bit of modeling with the scareware colors, but also put in a little bit different. So it's got to be a mix, and that's where my mind's got to work and where there's going to be a different medium. So, I'm going to start this off with a little bit of black. And should I do that or should I? Do? I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Everything kind of has a flesh base. Let me try something here. I'm going to try this. I don't want to layer, layer up this thing with a whole bunch of layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the music on real quick. Dead white isn't fresh dead though. I know it's not fresh dead, but I'm going to see what I can do with it. Topher is a fucking beast with this shit. <laughs> um, Andy, let me go back. Andy Webb, Friday the 13th, Vengeance will be out on September 13th. Um, that will be uh, less than a month from now, I think. And... Um, so, what I'm going to do here is, like I said, I'm just seeing who, okay. I'm going to see what I can do with this and see if I can get a little bit of coloration on here. And see what I can do. Make this look a little bit different from what he does. not fresh dead, but it's going to be, it's got to have a dead flesh look to it. So I'll take a little bit of brown and put it on there. I'm not going to do it real heavy because I want to make sure this is the right color I want to use. I'm wondering, this modernness up here on the head is looking really, really, really good. I do know what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put some real, uh, real blood, perma blood in that, in that crack, in the, in the, uh, in the crack and crevice, I am going to do that. I'm just going to do this lightly. Get a little bit more. That's turning out pretty good. 
Let me cut the music on and we'll get into the zone with this. And make this work. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm having trouble because it's so big. Hopefully, I gotta say this much, man. You did an excellent job with these wrinkles. They're showing up beautifully under here. Very, very good job with the wrinkles. Light and subtle, I don't even see them until you go to paint them. Oh, man, that's fucking badass. That is really beautiful. Look at this. You guys are going to want to see this. Look at this wrinkle work. You see all this? These are very, very subtle wrinkles that don't show up until you hit it with paint. And they come out beautifully. I've got wrinkles all over the Vengeance thing that you can see from, from miles away. But I haven't really gotten into being able to do very subtle, subtle like wrinkles. Oh man, that is wonderful. Man, those wrinkles are fucking fabulous. I'll tell you what, dude, I'm going to have to see how you, I'm going to have to pick your brain on how you do that. That is excellent. I know somebody else who does masks that are similar to this. They can't do wrinkles for shit because I don't see them. Now here's where the details are going to get a little sketchy because I'm just going to overbase this lightly. I don't want to do too heavy on it. I lose detail in some areas, so. There's a lot of bone in this too, which is excellent. Fantastic too. Topher, I don't know where you got the model for the teeth. Those teeth are about the beautiful, most beautiful teeth I've ever seen. They really are. Wow. Mix it up. Now, of course, he's going to have a little bit of rot. So, guess what? I hope I can do this without turning him to Jason Swamp Thing. That's the key. I want to get the idea to put a little mossy coloring in there and rot, but I don't want to give him too much. Make him look green like the hawk or swamp thing.
All right. So now we're going to go with a little green. And then we'll go with black. So I'm going to clean this new brush out. Put a little green in here. I am actually put some green in here with the black. Oh. Use some of the green that I have. There we go. Just a light missing of green. Very light missing. To put some mossy undertones in there. You gotta look like he just came out of the ground and got dirt and, and and moss and grass and grudge and all that shit on it. I get up under the chin too. Okay, a little bit of green. I'm going to put this back in the bottle. Make sure I get the right bottle. Wrong bottle. Put this over here. Right. It's starting to look a little bit like Swamp Thing, isn't it? A little bit. Now I got a brand new bottle of uh, Old Bone White that I'm going to throw on here. But I want to make sure I clean this out really well.
Y'all see what I do to age the bone here in a minute. Got a couple of spots to put the bone in there. And they're settled. Be right back, and I'll need another uh, pick towel. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm clean this out. Oh, wait a minute. See a couple of spots in there? Um. I forget this has got bone and underskin layers underneath it. Of course, you got the spinal column in the back. Normally, latex itself would make for a good bone color, but I'm going to try something different with this. I'll try a little bit of subtle shading and see how that works. So far, I'm liking it. It's kind of coming out with a really good shade and density on it. And the thing is, Topher does such a good job with the wrinkles that it's like, dude, I don't want to put too much paint on here because I'm scared I'm going to obscure the wrinkle work. That's what's amazing about this. He doesn't get really heavy into his wrinkle work. He does just enough to make it subtle, and you don't see it until you paint it. That's what's fantastic about this piece. It's really beautiful. Whoa! Got this thing spitting back at me. Still got green in there and I gotta clean it out. Okay. Alright, now. Uh, let's see, what can we do from here? How about we put a little bit of, uh, what can we do, injury ochre? I don't know, I don't see a whole lot of yellow on here. There's a little bit of yellow already in there. I'm thinking maybe a little bit of... But the gum line is not going to be red, it's not going to be pink, but it's going to be kind of a dead flesh color. So maybe just a tiny tap of flesh color for the gum line and then overlay it with... It wouldn't be flesh flesh, but...
little bit on the pink color. Of course, the scar tissue has got to really be a little bit colored out. One of the things I always liked about the part four look, he had that massive scar tissue on his face, like he was in a fire or something. Never did, they never did explain that either. Okay, let's take a go, go back to a little bit more dead flesh to get this area a little bit defined here. Cover up this white a little bit. There we go. There we go. Get me on this. I don't know if this is going to get down all at once. Got some areas that are just a little bit hard to get to find. I can wipe those down.
You got a lot of high detail on this sofa. It's almost difficult to do. There's a lot of high detail on this thing. I mean, a lot. Now, oh, what I'm also thinking, Topher, is Wondering if some maggots coming out of the eyes might not be a bad touch. You got these honeycomb holes. I could probably go to the store, get some fishing maggots, glue them in there. That might not be a bad idea. The reason I do the layering on this, like this, with like one layer, then go back in and put another layer, is because, like I said, these wrinkles are so fascinating. I do not want to lose them by covering them up too much with paint. I want to make them stand out. And it's kind of hard to do that. That's what the challenge is, is painting this in so many different colors that these uh, wrinkles will actually stand out and pop. You know what? I didn't even trim the uh, the line off this mask. Shit. I completely forgot one-on-one -on -one, uh, mask making. I think you got it about as close as it's going to get, though. Yep, you sure did. I can't even cut it anymore. Wow. Well, this is a general idea. I'm going to let this sit and see how this looks for right now. I wanted to do a little black. I'm going to see how black goes over with it. I can darken it up. Give it kind of a smoky color on top of that. Get a couple of areas that you get little spots and stuff in. 
spice box. Man, this needs to be in a damn movie, Tofa, I'm telling you. This mask needs to be in a movie. This is good as shit. I like this. Wow. This really does need to be in a movie. Take a little thinner and get some of this out. I want to give it kind of a dirty bone look, but I don't want it to be too dirty. So, the bone kind of has to stand out a little bit. Wow. It's not bad, it's about what I was going for, so it's got that very undead, but kind of fresh dead look too. Now here's the good thing, Trophy. You went and did the outline for the eye. So all I've got to do is line these two side by side. So I just line these two by side by side and I'll just take the eye. And the eye is exactly the same eye as this. Well that is perfect, man. That is absolutely perfect. Cuts. Wow. Shit, you did a great, fantastic job. I don't know where the fuck you did such a good job on that. Wow. This is fucking amazing. It is amazing. Wow. I'm darkening it up a little bit with all that smoke black.
all the inside lines of this uh, flesh area. I gotta take the Q-tip. Take the Q-tip and go back over it with the uh, thinner and wipe it off. That way I can get down here and very carefully wipe away where it oversprays. Oh shit. Leaves nice, subtle, dark uh, shadows, but uh, I don't want it that far into the bone because I wanted to find the bone. I want the bone to be definitive. So, trying to go back in there and, and, and get the uh, cracks on the back side of the mask where it shows a lip. Well, shit, just pulled the head off of that. Go back in here and get some white. Keep going back over it and go like dark light, dark light, but kind of want to accent these uh, areas around the eyes. Residual thinner up here. Okay. dead flesh. Make these wrinkles stand out, man. These fucking wrinkles. I'm telling you, I can't get over how well of a job you did with that. That is just awesome. Darken in your name so it pops out. A new kind of fear. Wow.
usually miss the back of the ear here. I didn't get any of that. Wow. I take my glasses off. I didn't want to get this in a bright light. Would be better if it was a painted, if I painted naked. Are you sure you want to see that, Joe? I can paint naked if you want me to take my clothes off. But, uh, I do think you're a sick motherfucker and you need help. Alright, let me turn this around. So I can give you guys a close-up of this. Alright. This is what we have so far. I'm going to take my time with this. Because I want this. This is like a one-time deal for me with Topher. And I want to make sure I do this right. So, kind of going heavy with the uh, skin around the, the... I don't want it to look burnt. So I'm probably going to go in there and lighten that up a little bit when I do go over the bone. But I'm just...